So we went to Lowe's today, got some washers, new garden hose washers, and you can only buy them in a 10 pack. 10 pack was about a buck and a half. And so I'm thinking on putting a new washer on there and seeing if that works. If that doesn't work, then double stacking washers, and maybe that'll work. We'll see. We'll go outside and put it to the test. So what I've got from the factory is this washer here with a screen. So it's a rubber washer with a screen in it. It's got that thickness on it. So I bought green washers. They didn't have any with the screen on it. I'm thinking on taking this washer and putting the green washer on top of it and double stacking the washers like that. That way I wouldn't lose my screen and possibly it would seal up. We solved the majority of the leak, but it's still dripping here. One of the other things I wanted to compare was the end of these hoses. It's gonna be hard to see. This is an old hose I was using for testing. I know it's a green hose. You're not supposed to drink the water from that. This is our normal drinking hose that we carry with us and it's newer. And I had the little drip. Well, this one has some corrosion in it. So there's a possibility that the seals didn't completely seal there. This one, the end of the hose, I don't know if you can see it, but the end of the fitting is rolled in to a smaller diameter. So when you put the gasket on here, this one seems like it barely seals. This one looks like it would seal better. So I'll run another test. Put in my regular drinking hose and, uh, and it appears what I thought was true that the other hose connection is corroded this newer hose connection up against that double seal is finally sealing it's now time to replace the sink reinstall the sink and the drain and all that since i've worked out the plumbing problems I had this bucket here to catch some water and dump it out and get it out of the way Sure we don't have any leaks. My plan was we don't have hot water. All we have is cold water. So this side is already hooked up to my pump, which is hooked up to my 20 gallon water tank down here. My plan was that I would hook up the city high pressure side on this side whenever we're hooked up to that and it would give us uh, water pressure there and we wouldn't have to worry about filling up our tank. This is our 21 gallon tank right here. And we've got marks that we put in there for five, five, 10, 15, so that when we fill it up, we know how much water we're carrying. We usually, when we're on the road, carry about five gallons and we fill up whenever we, wherever we go. We power that with a 12 volt pump. Well, this pump operates when you open the spigot. So it somehow senses that there's no pressure. When there's no resistance, it turns on. It will also turn on when there's no water in the tank. Let's say we're carrying five and we use three somehow on the road, three gallons. Well, this water sloshes. If this pump is on 12 volt all the time, then this pump is gonna be operating off and on while you're driving down the road and you won't know it. In order to protect the pump while we're driving, I put in a 12 volt switch here. Now we can turn the pump on 
and it activates and we can turn it off while we're driving down the road so that the pump's not running also if you have a water leak of any kind where you lose the water out of the tank you're also going to to burn the pump up thanks for watching the video please subscribe